Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to try an alternate path. Remember in the previous video, we took a projectile from a height of 4.9 meters, threw it sideways, horizontally, at a velocity of 10 meters per second, and the projectile landed 10 meters away one second later. And when we calculated the action, or the path of least action, we calculated the action for that path, we found that it to be 34 joules times seconds. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take an alternate path. This path right here, and of course, since that looks like a straight line path, that means the velocity in the x direction must be constant and the velocity in the y direction must be constant. The restrictions are that the path takes the exact same amount of time, one second, and that we end and start in the very same location. Now, you would think that traveling the straight line path would be more desirable, that you cover less distance in the same amount of time, but you'll find out that's probably not the case because we know that any projectile thrown out sideways will go this way instead of along that straight path. Now, let's calculate the action of that alternate path to see if it's bigger or smaller than 34 joules times seconds. So again, the velocity in the x direction is constant and the path is a straight line path, so v sub y must also be a constant. And so what we can then say is that the velocity is therefore going to be equal, be equal to the square root of the velocity in the x direction squared plus the velocity in the y direction squared, or v squared is simply going to be v sub x squared plus v sub y squared, and we need that for our kinetic energy. And then we realize that v sub y can be found by taking the distance over time, in this case the distance is 4.9 meters, the time is one second, so therefore it is 4.9 meters per second in a downward direction. Doesn't quite look like seconds, does it? So let me rewrite that, there we go. All right, so now let's come up with the, with the equations for the kinetic and the potential energy. The kinetic energy will be one half times the mass times the velocity squared, which we got here, which is v sub x squared plus v sub y squared, both constants, and for potential energy, that's equal to mg times the height. Now, since the velocity coming down is a constant velocity, then how do we calculate the height? Well, we start initial height, and we're coming down at a constant velocity, so we can say that, let's see here, I'll put it over here, that the height is equal to the original height minus the velocity in the y direction times the time. And so after one second, that will then be equal to zero. And so that's the equation that we need to put in here for h. h will be h initial minus v in the y direction times time. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and calculate the action. So the action is equal to the integral from zero to one for the kinetic energy, which is one half the mass times v sub x squared plus v sub y squared times dt. And notice the only variable in here will be dt, that's the only thing we have to integrate, minus the integral from zero to one of mg, that's one, times h sub naught minus v sub naught of v in the y direction times time times dt. So let's go ahead and integrate that and see what we get. So the action is equal to one half times the mass, which is one times in the x, v in the x direction squared plus v in the y direction squared times dt integrated becomes t evaluated from zero to one minus the mass times g times the integral of this, that would be equal to h sub naught times t minus v v sub y times t squared over 2, going integrated from 0 to 1. And now we can go ahead and plug in the values and evaluate this. Again, the idea is what is the action for our alternate path? So this is equal to 1 half times 100 plus 4.9 squared times 1 minus 9.8 times initial height 4.9 times 1 and that would be minus 4.9 times 1 squared, it's still 1, divided by 2. Like this. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and see what we get here. So this is equal to um, 50 plus 4.9 squared divided by 2 minus 9.8 times 4.9. And that would be minus 9.8 times this. That's a plus 9.8 times 4.9 divided by 2 which essentially is 4.9 squared. Let's see that then. Okay, all right, well, I'll just leave it like that and use a calculator from this point on and see what we get. So 4.9 squared divided by 2, that's 12. So this is equal to 50 plus 12, or 62. So this is the integral of the kinetic energy portion. And then minus, let's see here, 9.8 times 4.9 divided by 2, so we have equals, that's 48, so minus 48 plus 48 divided by 2, which is 24. So essentially, this is 62 minus 24, which is equal to 62 minus 24, which is equal to 38 joules times seconds. All right, so let's see what we got. 38 and the path of least action was 34, the number is bigger, which means that that is not a path the object will take. Well, of course, we already know that from experience. When we throw a ball straight out this way, it doesn't take that straight line path. But we've had some questions about that. Well, how can that, that not be the path of least action? Because you take a straight line path, in the same amount of time, your kinetic energy will be smaller, but also your average potential energy will be smaller. And the difference is a bigger number than what we had over there, so therefore, the path will not be this straight line path, it will be the projectile path because that has the path of least action. So you say, well, well, what happens if I take a different path? What if I go this way instead of this way? Will I also get a larger value? Well, let's try that. On the next video, we'll take a, a different path a little bit further and see what we get when we do that. So stay tuned and we'll try one more time to see if we come up with an alternate path where the action will be a smaller number, and that is how it's done.